Hi everyone. Uh, we're gonna kind of harken back to our old way that we were doing reviews before and just do handlebar to the front and just talk about everything, all the thoughts that I have about this. This is the Graco Hose Adventure Wagon and we're gonna be doing our review on it today. I know we've had a lot of requests to do this one, so sorry it took so long. We were dealing back and forth with Graco about some issues with my handlebar. So we're going to open the new one today and we'll test out the handlebar on that one and give you the results as to what you can expect when you buy this. Um, but as for now, we're just gonna go back, you know, back to front and just talk about all the things that we like or dislike about it. So it's gonna be mixed up. It's not gonna be pros in one part, cons in one part. It's gonna be all together. So the very first thing that I'll talk about here is the handlebar. Do you want to kind of show the handlebar? Um, Cause it's not covered and I actually think it would be difficult to cover in a sense because uh, there's this plastic piece in the center that would, you know, prevent you from wrapping it all the way. I, I suppose you could do two pieces. Um, but yeah, it's completely uncovered and it's just like a styrofoam kind of a, or, you know, foamy feeling, maybe not styrofoam, but foamy feeling. Um, it doesn't attract so many hairs, but not something that I find pleasant on my hands. So maybe that's because I've had so many strollers and wagons at this point, but I wanted to uh, talk about that just in case. Now the method of moving it from push to pull, I'll show it to you on this one. This is the one that is defective. Um, the new one, we're going to do a separate little clip at the end of this video that shows how it works on the new one that's coming in today. And I'll show you if it's any easier or if this is exactly how it's supposed to work. Um, so there's two buttons on the inside of this handlebar and you can press them at the same time and you move it down. Now, as you can see, mine stops right here, right now. Um, but what you need to do is get it all the way down so it will unlock and disengage. So for mine, I have to really force it down, but then that's how it's easy. So it works just like the even flow. That's how the even flow works as well. And then when you get up on this side, you do this to lock it. Now it's not gonna lock in the sense that it will go down. Um, it, it's not gonna just stand in place, but it does uh, go into pull mode that way. And then you can adjust the height of it, which is really nice um, for your taste and for your comfort. So that's how easy it is to uh, move it from the push to the pull. That's a feature that I like. It's pretty easy. And it's not like the X4 or the X2 from Wonderful that it has um, a handlebar just kind of out on the front, always there. I feel like this is aesthetically a more pleasing way to do a push to pull. Uh, so those are a couple of things. Something that I will talk about as well that I'm not so fond of is storage or lack thereof. There is no basket that comes with this wagon. The only options that there are there's one a zipper pouch here on the back and it has what they call water bottle holders. This is the size of like those mini bottles that you get like in a kid's meal from fast food. So this is not gonna hold a parent size bottle at all. There's another zipper pocket here on the front, exactly the same as the first. There are no pockets within. Um, and that's the extent on the inside of this wagon, there are no pockets for kids for storage. So I think that's one place where they're really lacking on this wagon is a storage option. Um, I have hacked it. I used the Anthem 2 basket on this and it works perfectly. So there are definitely, they could do it if they wanted to and I hope they will. We have seen other brands like Jeep to do add-ons after the fact for things that consumers want and need. So hopefully they will take that um, advice into account and make something like that. But for right now, you're gonna have to learn to do some hacks to make this work if you need storage. Um, because it's it's pretty lacking in that regard. Um, something that I really like about the Graco are the canopies. These provide fantastic coverage. We live in Arizona, so we have full sun right now and it gets very hot. I had the kids out at the store the other day, a few different stores were walking around, and this gives fantastic coverage. It's obviously, it's more like a Veer style coverage, but it gives better coverage than the Veer. With the Veer, you have to buy those little visors to get it to be close enough. Um, but if you just have the canopies themselves, it really doesn't provide this much coverage. And I really like that this has the mesh built in on the sides. This fabric is very wipeable. This color is an exclusive color with the Bye Bye Baby partnership that they have, the retailer. Um, if you buy it from Graco, they have the gray color. Um, and that one's nice too, but I love this color. This is beautiful. So these fabrics are very sturdy. I love how sturdy these canopies are, okay? There's a, there's a bar here that is very stiff and it's definitely, it's a higher quality than I was expecting. I'm gonna be honest with you. This fabric has really impressed me and the construction of these canopies 
is very impressive to me. It has a good um, high clearance on this. And uh, we have a chart. We did the even flow versus the Graco wagon comparison. And if you want dimensions and things like that, please go to that video. We have a whole chart at the end that gives you um, seat to canopy and all those kind of things, dimensions that you're gonna wanna know. Um, so yeah, I'm impressed with this. To be honest, it's one of my favorite features of this wagon. They fold down very easily. They don't stick up, they don't stick out. Um, they just work seamlessly. So I was very impressed with that. Now, at first I was a little perplexed by this feature on the seats, um, but they, they come off like this with the Velcro exposed. And for a while I wondered what that meant because I couldn't find it in the instruction manual, but that's because I didn't have the car seat adapter. And we also have the car seat adapter coming in. So we will do some filming with that and show you how that works. It only accepts Graco car seats. Um, I don't know if they're gonna come out with anything. Big box brands like this generally try to stay with their brand. So it could just stay Graco. Um, but I, I'm surprised because you can use it on either side of the wagon, which is really nice. So when we get that in, we're gonna do um, some filming with that and show you what that's like. But yeah, that's where it attaches. So you would pull that down and it attaches here on the frame. Um, and you can do that on either side. Uh, another note about materials is that look at the seats. These are very plush. Um, they're, they're obviously wipeable as well. And um, there's mesh built in on the inside of the wagon, on the side where they're sitting, as well as on the footwell area. So you're gonna have some good ventilation, even if you have both of the canopies up, you're gonna have good airflow moving through this wagon. So overall, with that part of the design, I'm very impressed. And I really think it's very comfortable. I think there are other wagons like maybe the Anthem or the Evenflow that are not as plush, not as comfortable as this wagon is in that regard. Um, downside on the seats is that it is only a three point harness. There's no option for a five point. I have seen some people hack a five point, but I don't know how you would do that on this wagon. I've never done that kind of a hack myself. Um, we have a nine month old and this just doesn't provide as much support as she needs. She's been sitting unassisted for months now and she has pretty good trunk control. But yeah, this is not providing the best um, support. I'm not a fan of three point harnesses. So maybe in the future they'll think about adding something like that. Um, but that's something that you wanna consider because if you have a little one in this wagon, you're either gonna have to deal with that or you're going to use the car seat adapter. So that's something to think about. Um, Something else that I will note here is the footwell. It is not an optional footwell. This footwell is always in use, it's always down. It has a wipeable uh, material at the bottom, which is really great for spills and yuckies and things. You can hit that with a baby wipe. However, um, like I said, it's not optional and it doesn't have a zipper opening that you can open. A lot of brands will have a zipper, maybe along here, that you can open up and uh, use it to shake out or get little yuckies out of there. Um, this one, I highly recommend a handheld vacuum. will help you out on that. Um, but there's no frame on this. That's part of why they can collapse it in the design that it has, and we'll show you that. But it's just a flexible footwell. So it was a little bit um, surprising to me that they didn't have a zipper on there. Um, but yeah, so that's something that you're gonna wanna consider. Something else that you wanna consider. So we have, there's covers that come on these back tires to cover this part and ours fell off during a walk. I'm pretty sure I still have it, but just note that that's something that happens. You can see actually, it's helpful for the video because you can see how it attaches to um, the rest of the wagon. So this doesn't just pop off like with a button. You have to take this out and then remove this part and then the tire comes off. So if you have extremely limited trunk space or something of that nature, a lot of the wagons, you can pop the back tires off and uh, make it more compact in that way. This one, you can't do that. It's not an on-the-fly thing. Um, so I don't, I don't know if they recommend even taking them off once you've installed them. The front tires remove very easily, but the back tires are a little bit problematic in that way. Um, something you may want to think about. Uh, another thing that I will talk about is the brakes here and just kind of the back of the wagon. So you can see that they have the brakes. These are individual brakes. Even though they have this connection, they are um, individual brakes and you have to engage each one of them separately to lock the back tires. So a little bit more about the back of the wagon here. Um, you can see these nice big tires. These are, these are quite a good size and I love the material on them. They're actually rubber and you can see these bumps that give it some tread. This is not like the Jeep. This is not like um, the baby trend version from Target where it's just like a smooth plastic that's shiny that doesn't actually grip any floors. 
This is actually rubber. And I found that in my testing, it actually makes a big difference in the push and the maneuvering and the feel um, of the wagon. So I love these tires. Can't recommend them enough for the material and the craftsmanship on that. Really, really fantastic. Um, they also come with these mud guards that are included with the wagon. And uh, my last note about the back tires is that there is actually suspension built in on these. So you can see here um, the spring, it's on both sides of the wagon and it it's really nice. It, it gives a great ride. Now, something I will point about in the front is that you have it not only in the front and the back, do you have the springs. So I'll turn it around. Or it's on the side, huh? So you can see it right here. Um, you have it on all four tires, which is fantastic. It also, uh, the front tires lock, which is not common on uh, stroller wagons. And so you pull up, fixed in place, pull down to disengage. And the front tire removal is just that easy as well. So overall, I think for more of a budget wagon, a big box kind of a deal, the tires on this have blown me away. Very impressed by these. Um, the canopies, you know, the materials, just fantastic. We're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of the fold, um, how compact it is. My husband's gonna step in and do that part so you can see kind of how easy it is to carry around and just how those things are done. Now we're gonna talk about collapsing the wagon. I'll talk a little bit about storing it, carrying it, and then setting it back up. So first things first, you are gonna to wanna to engage the back brakes. This is gonna help uh, this next step here. So uh, you're going to notice here that there's a small space here. This may or may not be because it's defective. We're going to find out later on in the video. Um, forgot that step. Uh, so you're going to push these buttons here, same ones you two uh, adjusted, and you're going to push down a little forcefully. Again, it may be easier later on, but when you do that, you're going to notice this is exposed now. It's a little uh, padlock. It's unlocked. This means you can now move the handlebar. So we're going to move that to the front. First step or second step, I forgot the last count. Next, I'm going to grab these little handles. I'm going to lift up. This happens kind of quick, so be careful. So, now what, what sometimes happens is that this will engage automatically, but you might have to move the fabric aside and make sure that that does lock. So, um, something else I like about this is that it's got a uh, decent standing fold. Um, and I mean that it doesn't just barely stand up, like if it gets pushed, it won't fall all the way over, um, so it's got a pretty good standing fold. So now when I'm carrying this thing around, what I like about it is that I don't have to really use my back too much to lift it or to carry it. I'm not straining my shoulder carrying it on one side. I can just carry it around my waist like this. This is helpful for moving upstairs or navigating tight hallways, um, but it's the easiest stroller or wagon I've ever had to really carry around. Um, and then it doesn't really take up a lot of space. Uh, this actually fits in my passenger seat. I had to store it there one time when I couldn't empty my trunk in time. So now let's talk about setting it up. We're going to place it in its standing position here. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that this doesn't, uh, this is out of my way. Okay. If I start by unclipping this, it will actually, I'll show you. You'll do that, which you can't set it up this way, right? So make sure move these front wheels to back. Start by moving the handlebars away. Push here to disengage the latch. I'm just going to pull this wheel back. Now I'm going to lift the handlebars back around this way. Now you're going to see still that there's red here and there's red here. When I lift this up though, the red is now not there anymore. So these are locked firmly in place. And then when I pull this back, Again, the red padlock is now not showing, which means that it is now locked and secure. It's not gonna collapse on your kids. There you have it. Okay, so we have a handful of things that we're gonna cover in this review portion, and then the last part will be unboxing the other one and uh, doing that little side-by-side -side check on the handlebar. So the last few things I wanna cover here are when we do the fold, it is a standing fold, but you wanna note that the handlebar is on the ground. Now, this may be the explanation for this piece of plastic that this is meant to protect the handlebar from actually touching the ground, um, and the plastic is supposed to absorb that, you know, contact. Um, but that is something to note. Some people will hate that, so I want to include that. Um, the other thing that I want to take note of at the back here is that curb hopping, you're going to have to put your foot on this two bars to curb hop. 
Now, if you have weight in the wagon, that could get damaged. Um, you could, you know, bend it and permanently alter the way that the tires move or something, affect the push. So I don't know if you really want to do that. There's no way to sneak your foot around that silver bar and get to like the, the, the thicker axle there. So just something to consider. Um, if you have two little kids in there, it may not be a big deal, but that's a risk that you would take. Um, something that I really like is that these canopies are included. There are options like the beer, um, and what's the other one that doesn't have them included? Oh, Wartail. They don't have these included as a separate purchase. I'm of the mindset that you buy a baby gear option, it needs to come with canopies. That just feels essential to me. So I love that this is here. They are great quality. Um, and to remark on the quality as well, we are very impressed with the construction on this Graco wagon. I know in car seat world, they're huge and they generally have a very good reputation. Strollers are a little more hit and miss as far as the quality goes. Now, the wagon, I'm impressed with. The push is great, the tires are great, construction is great. It's so sturdy. Look at this frame. This is so sturdy. There's not little um, flimsy joints and things that are gonna give you trouble over time. And obviously, like we said, the tires are great. There's no, like for example, in the family Z, there are parts of the wagon that are sharp. It's exposed edges on metal. Um, they don't even put a rubber stopper on it. That's dangerous. That's dangerous for your kids, that's dangerous for you. This doesn't have any of that. This is all very well rounded. It's very sturdy um, and it's designed with safety in mind, I feel. So that was very impressive to us. We also like that the button on the front to release that front tire is not a peg because there are other wagons like maybe the Anthem that they have a peg release and that my husband has like ran his leg or his baby toe or something into before by accident, of course, and that didn't feel good. So a button release is a really great um, advantage to have on here, as well as the other things that are rounded out and uh, you know not sticking sticking out um, to become, become painful. So the last thing that I will say about this wagon is that with the footwell being not optional, napping can be difficult. Now there are hacks that people use if they put a little bin at the bottom and uh, they cover it up with blankets or something so that kids can nap comfortably, or if they put one of those big squishmallow, whatever those pillow things are, and stuff it in there that way, or they just put a mountain of blankets or something. People do hacks like that, but that's something you're gonna have to think about if you are out and about and you have a kid that needs to nap. Um, you're gonna have to be carrying things to fill that portion of the wagon. So I'm a big fan of optional footwells for that reason. You have the lark tail and the pronto squared that both have the optional footwell. There's probably another option I'm not thinking of. But if you are out with littles, um, something you're gonna wanna consider. This will be a little bit of a size demonstration for you when you have a car seat installed in the Graco. I only tested it with the car seat facing in this direction because if you put it on the other side where my oldest son who is six is sitting, it's going to be world facing. They don't have a configuration where you can have the car seat facing toward you sitting over the big tires. Now, this guy is two and a half, um, just to give you a little size reference, but I wanted to show you this so that you can know how much space there is when kids of different sizes are in the wagon. Now, this is taking the adapter off and note that you cannot have the canopy on the wagon when you have the car seat adapter installed. This is my replacement wagon. I wanted to take it out and not set it up. I only wanted to test the handlebar function, so that's what you're going to see here. I wanted to see if it feels like my previous wagon. Um, when you're closing the handlebar down, I noticed this one did stop at that same point. However, it was a lot easier to smoothly get the rest of the handlebar all the way down. So I do think that my previous one was a bit defective. It was kind of hard to get down. You had to jiggle it a lot. I definitely think that this one is easier to use. This is the included snack tray. We covered the snack tray in our unboxing video. I didn't really say anything else about it here because it's just a very simple snack tray. Not that much space if you have two kids in there eating, but there's not much else to say about it. That's gonna be it for our Graco Most Adventure Wagon review. If you have any questions as usual, please leave them in the comments and I'm happy to help. We also have an Instagram under the same name, Strolls Out of Pops. So I'm posting pictures and videos um, while we're testing things. So if you wanna follow along for that, it's pretty fun. We're doing giveaways on there as well. So I recommend that you follow not only our YouTube, but you join the Stroller Divas group if you're on Facebook and follow us on Instagram because we're doing giveaways, we have accessories, we have strollers that we're doing giveaways on. Right now we have um, a military and gold star families giveaway that we're doing on the V1 Pronto. So I highly encourage you to join. We'd love to have you. 
We have some really great content coming up, so stick around for that. We're gonna be doing reviews on the Pronto Squared, on the Limo by Vidiamo. We're doing the side-by-side -side comparison of the W4 Elite and the Camel Easy Wagon. And we're gonna be doing individual reviews of those as well. So I hope that you'll stay and uh, tune in for those videos. Thank you for being here. I hope that we helped with this video and, and our two cents were useful to you. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Overall, there are certainly things that could be improved about this wagon, especially the storage, but we were impressed with the construction, we were impressed with the materials, the tires, um, the canopies, just overall, we actually really enjoyed this wagon.